For the sidewall sections in here, I want a piece that is 25 and a quarter inches tall that will tuck up under that upper rub rail and then overlap the bottom piece and then get covered, like I said, at that joint with the bottom rub rail. So I'm using a pair of shears. These things work really well and cutting 25 and a quarter inches along that line. When you're done, you end up with just a curly cue and it works pretty slick. I could use a plasma cutter, uh, but that does leave a bit of a, a rough sort of melted edge, which you need to grind off. I could also use a zip disc, which would work. It just seems to take longer. And this is just super clean. So if you've got access to shears like this for 18 gauge steel, they work just fine. I did say those shears work just fine for 18 gauge steel. That is mild steel. A friend of mine that's visiting with his ambulance to do some work used the shears to cut some 18 gauge stainless, which is a lot harder and it actually snapped the blade. It's easy to get replacement blades, so it's no big deal. But just keep in mind when I'm talking about cutting 18 gauge steel with those shears, it's with these shears and just mild carbon steel. I have measured and marked this line 25 and a quarter inches down. And now I have double checked it because I don't want to screw this up. Slinky, a slinky, such a wonderful toy. Thanks, Ruby. Okay. This is Ruby. She's the videographer. These shears are pretty safe, but it is a good idea to wear gloves. If you were to slip, the biggest safety hazard really is if you slipped and your hand you know, rubbed up against that sharp edge, you cut yourself pretty well. Well, you have delicate hands, so even more important for you. Yes, I have delicate hands. I have 60 year old sun damaged hands. Thank you for telling everybody on YouTube world that I have delicate hands. <laughs> you could get that out if you really wanted to. I'll leave it.
On this corner back here, I've got one piece of angle iron to weld in in there. And then I will cut and put on this skin. And the skin is folded over right here. So I'll cut the piece from here. Sorry, from here down to here, I want a piece that's 17 inches long. And then I want a piece that goes around the corner under here somewhere, so it'll stop in there. And my favorite way of measuring these, which I can't do one-handed, is with a little tape measure I got from Joanne's Fabrics. A uh, regular metal tape measure just doesn't get around the corners as accurately around these curves. And so I keep one of these, which I have to turn around <laughs> and start at zero, but it just works really well. You can hold it here and then measure around just very accurately. And we're at 35 inches for that. All right, here is the second one of my two panels for the back corner. What size did I say I needed to cut these? Uh, 17 wide by 36 long. So anyway, I just used the same shears and I cut and it comes out pretty good. Now I'm going to take these over to the brake and fold over the edge. I should probably show you that I mark the panels. There's one clean factory edge that will be exposed and that's going up at the top. This is the only place on the bus where a lower layer will lap over an upper layer. But again, I'm using the 3M 5200 in there. It will never leak. And then I marked with the square a line down here, and that's where I'll do the break, and I break it down. And then this goes over and wraps around the corner like that. So these are marked, and now I'm ready to do the bend. Let's see if I can do this one-handed in my cool vintage Pexto break. Just to give it a little more, I'll need two hands for that. I still need to weld in angle iron right there, but I've got these clamped into place and they will extend around the sides. And I have a couple different ways or options for creating this curve. I do have a fixture set up with a couple varied sizes or diameters of steel pipe. They're 24 inches long, welded with a gap, so I can put the metal in there and create a bend around it. Another way, at least for the marking of that bend location, is to stretch it around the corner. So I've got the sheets here clamped into place, and as I trip, stretch them around the corner. I had taken just a pair of sheet metal vice grips and welded a piece of chain on, and I can use that then for stretching when I wanna get a piece of metal really tight. That just works out really well. I've seen people use ratchet straps and such, and that's fine, but again, we when we find a need for something, we try to make a tool that makes our life easier, and I don't wanna keep using ratchet straps every time. So this gives a really nice pull. I've got two of these if I need, I can pull at the bottom and the top, but in this case, I'm just pulling around the center and there's a bit of a gap up here and at the bottom, but I'll create that roll now that I can mark it and know that location. All right, I rolled this over a piece of probably four inch pipe. It doesn't really matter what the radius is. You just push and bend and this edge is, sorry, <laughs> follow the camera, Ross. This edge is rolled over so that will look really nice. We'll rivet across the top with the 3M 5200. So that will, that'll make a permanent bond. This part down here gets covered with the rub rail. And now I'll use that little pulling mechanism just to pull this tight. The next step is drilling in a couple Clicos and putting some clamps on just to make sure this is all nice and tight. And with that, we can apply the adhesive, drill the holes, and rivet this on. One thing that's worth having if you do this is a rivet spacing tool. So you can set this for different distances 
and it creates a nice a nice straight line and then you just mark off the spacing I'm not so good at math and this saves a lot of math up at the top, I haven't yet pressed that into place, but you can just see the 3M 5200 Marine adhesive sealant leaking out. This stuff, like I said, is about as permanent as I can think of. And I have put this back in place. I've drilled out a couple holes for the quarter inch closed end rivets. These are the ones that are closed on the back so water cannot penetrate from the front through the rivet tube. I put in a couple just to hold it in place. I will press this over once I pull it around the corner and then pull these rivets tight. I didn't put the Clecos back because that sealant would screw up the Clecos and then I wouldn't be able to use them again. So these are just temporary. I'll pull them in place or pull them snug here in just a minute after I, after I hook up my uh, pull strap mechanism. So on this side, I just clamped this in place and it's connected to a cool little um, come along chain hoist. And then I'm using a, a climbing daisy chain I had left over from rock climbing and wind turbine work. But this thing's great because I can hook it into any number of holes and get this in the right position. So I will pull this tight and then put in some rivets. And I'm using this Chief, it's Harbor Freight's sort of upscale brand and it handles these quarter inch rivets just fine. Anyway, just finish that up. Down at the bottom, you'll see that's where the rub rail goes. So no rivets go, no rivets go in here yet. Up at the top, first I'm drilling from the inside, uh, just using the original holes for spacing consistency. And then I'll put uh, intermediate rivets in here using my spacing tool. So I'm putting a rivet in here. These rivets go into a steel channel in the back. This rivet doesn't. So on the back side, I put a washer and that way it pulls it tight and really secures these two layers and locks them together nicely. So this upper rivet now has a washer on the back side, and that way I'm not just relying on the strength of the thin sheet metal uh, to retain that. It just gives you better clamping force and a better bond. After you drill out the holes, some come out pretty clean like this one did. Some come out with a large burr on the back, like that one or this one. And if you want your washer to sit flush, you gotta use a chamfering bit just to clean those up. And if you don't, that's what you end up with. So this one, I did a reach around and just put the washer on blindly before I chamfered it and there was a burr in there. So that's tight, but uh, it doesn't sit as flush as I would like. This thing is just the bee's knees. So it allowed me to space these out evenly up here. What I did was drill the couple out from the inside through existing holes and then just lined up a couple of these on the two rivets that I put in. That let me evenly space the rivets in between and I just worked my way around the corner. You can either use a marker like I sometimes do or I've got a little uh, a steret punch that I push and it's spring loaded. So I just push on it and it goes pink and makes a nice dimple for putting a rivet in. There's one that's just slightly higher than the other. That was the original rivet hole but even on the, I'm not making excuses, uh, but even on the bus rivets, especially out in the front, uh, they are not all in a perfect line. Down here, I put in just a few rivets and these are in a place where they will be underneath the rib on 
the rails so they won't create a lump or anything. And these are just to hold this in place and tight. So I've removed my clamp. This is pulled nicely around the corner. You see I've got the 3M. There are three beads of that in here and you can see it's oozing out around the top. So I'm confident in that. And now it's time to work on this side. Next one is 115 inches long and it will tuck in here up front behind this. There's a bead of 5200 down underneath there. And then after it's screwed up in the top and hanging there, I will run beads from the inside on all these braces. And then down here, the overlap will bring it right to here just so it looks nice. I know we advertise we don't use screws, I only use them temporarily. So this now lines up nicely right down here. And when the rub rail goes on, then that'll look really sharp and factory. We'll put some rivets down here. This screw will come out. So after we get it hanging, I drill all the holes. And we use quarter inch rivets because they are just slightly larger than the factory big rivet holes. And that way when we drill them out, it makes a nice tight seal in there. And I'll throw a rivet in wherever there's a rib because those don't get the washers on the back. Then I'll pull the screws out, then I'll put the rivets through the holes, put washers on the back in the sheet metal, sheet metal panel overlap say that again and then uh, those get riveted in and that's done. on the inside now I run a bead of the 5200 down where it overlaps and in here and then we'll attach the bottom even though this lap joint is an upper layer over an outer layer and still has the rub rail over it it couldn't leak there's no way for water to 
flow back uphill. I still put this 5200 in here because I consider it really to be structural as much as a sealant. And that way it just bonds everything together. Good. 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 What? Good. The side sheets are on, and what I've done is just come along and drilled into the frame where I don't have to have somebody on the inside to put a washer on. And I'm just putting one rivet in over the hat channel ribs in the original hole and that lines everything back up again. And because these are quarter inch rivets, like I mentioned earlier, I drill the hole out a little bit and that makes a nice snug fit. Got a little bit of squeeze out here, I'll clean that up. But I just put one rivet in at every rib. Then I'll go along, put in the top ones and then drill and install all the other. This is what the inside looks like with the lower rub rail riveted back on, the upper rub rail, the bottom rivets that we took out are riveted back on, and then there are three rivets in each vertical. The bottom rub rail's on, there's the top, you can tell because it says top. Seams are overlapped from front to back. This is all sturdy. So down the side, you'll see there are three rivets plus the 3M5200 in there, squished nicely on both sides of the, the hat channel that we made. I should point out that this formed end was inside here and is really not necessary, and we cut it off. Why did we cut it off? So I can use it on the other side where we actually had to cut the rub rail, and then I can weld this on and make it look factory. There's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's more than one way to skin a bus. This is just how we do it. There are other options, certainly. Anyway, that's the end of the side and rear skinning. And in the next video, I'll show you how we handled the portion over the front windshield. That's all I've got for now, except some chickens.